and welcome to Let's Talk AppSec Ops. My name is Mark Lambert, VP of Products here at Armor Code, and I'm joined by my good friend, Mark Hermling from Grammatech. How are we doing, Mark? Perfect, Mark. How about with yourself? I'm very good. It looks like you're cold up there in Canada. Uh, down here in Los Angeles, I'm still wearing a polo shirt and not, and not freezing, which is a good no, thing. It's a bit chilly um, out here. Yes, yes. So um, you and I have worked together over the years, um, very much in the functional safety space, safety critical compliance, aerospace, automotive and the like. And the, the thing that you and I were talking about the other day is the interesting how that industry has evolved as everything's become connected and security is becoming you know more important, along with accelerated software releases and updates and all of that connectivity, you know, stuff that comes with connectivity. Um, what have you been seeing recently and kind of like how have you been working with clients in, in this space? Yeah, it, it's, it's absolutely clear, right? You cannot have safety without security. Right? Your software can be as much safe as you want, but if there's a hack where somebody can upload some new functionality and start executing it, how it goes to your safety. Um, so where our customers are, are challenging is that they absolutely know how to do safety. There's a, there's a, there's a process and there's check boxes to do, there's coding standards and, and safety standards. Where our customers are, are struggling that we're helping them with and they're really happy with is get away from just focusing on the functional safety. Make sure that you do the right thing in the right order. Integrate that into your process to, such that you have safety, security, but at the same time, safe yourself development efficiency, right? It, it, we're trying to do more with less. We have to get quicker in, in getting this software out and, and then getting safety updates and security updates out quick. And that's what we're helping with. Yeah, yeah. And actually get, getting the software out quickly, I mean, that's, you know, that's really where DevSecOps comes in, right? And, you know, it does give us the ability to not only deliver functionality out to, to the clients quicker, which is obviously it delivers competitive advantage, but also gives us the ability to respond quicker to any kind of security um, issue as well. And, you know, over the years, you know, DevSecOps is becoming more and more important in the functional safety space. Is that what you're seeing as well as you're, as you're talking to the industry? Yeah, absolutely. And then the, the industry, uh, automotive, industrial, healthcare, they're all looking at this and saying, okay, I have a, a vulnerability here. I know it's here. Now I need to update my software to fix that vulnerability. But at the same time, I have to like satisfy all my security, my uh, safety rules. And the US DOD has a, a wonderful concept around that that they call continuous authority to operate, right? Make sure that whenever you have a new software build, that that's a potential build that you can send out that is already uh, has all the, the check marks achieved for both safety and security. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and how do we streamline that process though? Because, you know, that those check boxes, right, that, that you need to do for, you know, safety critical compliance, functional safety requirements, you know, they're pretty cumbersome. So, you know, what have you seen as the, the efficiencies that you can gain and how, and how do you gain those? It's all about automation, right? You, you cannot do this type of workflow if you still have manual steps in your process. So literally everything needs to be automated and taken away from the developer as a concern. The developer, uh, he, she needs to, to focus on features, bug fixes, getting that stuff out, getting it done well and, and merging it into uh, whatever source control repository you have and, and the rest of the pipeline follows automatically. If you can do that and you can do that well, then that's where you, you get the efficiency improvements, right? Finding defects quickly in that pipeline, fixing them and, and then running through the rest of whatever steps you need to do from a security or safety perspective. Yeah, yeah, and and you know, automation. That's kind of like the always the hot word within within our world, right? It's like how can I automate these processes so I can do them with minimal human intervention? Um, right. And there are so many different checks and validations that we need to do to really build out that and make sure that we are kind of like building a solid a solid process. Um, and I know that. You know, the things that we've been talking about are related to SAS and uh, or, uh, static analysis, static code analysis, and source composition analysis. And those two play a very important role in that DevOps pipeline. Um, interestingly, over the last few years, I've seen SCA becoming, you know, SAS has been there for a long time, right? So static analysis has been a long time, but SCA over recent years when the functional safety has grown in importance. Um, and bringing these two together is is a critical uh, level. And I know you, you you guys have technology in this area as well. 
So, you know, like, why do you see the adoption? Do you see adoption of them equally? Do you see that somebody starts with one and then switches to the other? Are there any particular trends or recommendations you would make to somebody? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, right? So everybody is doing SEA. You have to do SEA. I mean, technically, you can go through all these standards and, and achieve functional safety without SEA, without static application security testing. But it's it's so expensive that it doesn't make any sense. So everybody does static application security testing in some way or form. Uh, automation is more important, and that's where the win is. Uh, people are becoming much more aware that SCA, software composition analysis, or if you want to use another term, an, an SBOM becomes more important to understand what's in your software, right? The way that I often talk about it is everybody knows their software inventory, right? Everybody knows what applications they run, or at least they should, right? There's, there's lots of technologies around this already that people are using, but many people don't know what inventory is in the inventory, right? Mm -hmm. So it's great to say, hey, I have this, um, this application that I run uh, on my embedded device and it deals with connectivity. I have this router. What's in the router? What's the open source components that make up this router? Because that's where a lot of these hacks are coming from. And once these hacks are published and your router is out in the field, how do you fix it? If, you, if your router is in the car, how do you get, uh, number one, how do you know it's there? And number two, how do you fix it? Because that may be a trip to the garage or an expensive OTA update. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and um, you, you you tie the, the SCA and SBOM together quite well there, right? Because it's like, Often when I'm talking to folks about SCA, it's about what open source libraries am I using in my development process? But when we're talking about SBOM, it's much more about understanding what's inside the thing that I'm consuming, right? And how do I extract that information out if what I'm being delivered is either a third party service that I don't have any physical software or a binary that has everything packaged together. Um, yeah, and that I think that is a challenge that a lot of folks face, especially within the you know, automotive industry, for example. Yeah, especially, and I use GUI libraries, graphical user interface libraries as, as the, the canonical example, right? Yeah. Everybody says, okay, I, I use this uh, commercial library or that commercial library, and there's a number of them out there. But all these commercial libraries include open source for image handling, right? And image mm -hmm. handling is notoriously buggy, whether it's JPEG or PNG or FFmpeg. So if you get that library from a, a third party provider and you include it in your application, your application could be vulnerable and you, you may not have the SBOM. So our solutions uh, can actually generate that SBOM from the final image load, from the, the, the software that you deliver from the binary, uh, which, which makes it very, very easy for people to get that quick overview at any point in their development life cycle. Yeah, yeah. And actually you're, you're making me think about kind of like the evolution of attacks that we've been seeing over the years. So, you know, what is it? Oh, probably probably close to a decade and a half ago now, the, the Prius attack where like the guys basically took apart a Prius and rewired some connections and were able to control the vehicle. Okay, great. Well, yes, that's a vulnerability, but the chance of it actually happening are pretty minimal. We then had the, the Jeep attack where it was a firmware update exposed I think it was the OnStar system to an external attack. You could control the brakes and steering from a laptop. And then you, you were telling me just before we started this, there was a, a recent one from Sirius XM hacking a vehicle? Yeah, so this was published yesterday. They, uh, they achieved it earlier in the, the year, but apparently they hacked a system with just a VIN number, nothing else, no authorization. And they were able to uh, lock, unlock, start, locate, flash, and, uh, and honk the horn, which I think is a great use case. Yeah, yeah. And, and as these vehicles become more and more connected, I mean, for the record, I don't have one with any connected Wi-Fi oh. or anything like that for an actual reason. Um, is, um, not only do I like older cars, but I also prefer to have my life a little bit more under my own control. Um, but but yeah, it's, it's a big risk and it, it just further increases the importance for being able to pull in data from these different sources and bring it all together, which is obviously a key, key thing that we're doing together, bring in grammar tech um, uh, functionality, grammar tech SAST, SEA functionality into Armor Code, along with data from other feeds to help our clients in you know, automotive and other areas to, to kind of like really get a complete view, view of that supply chain. So, yeah, that's why we have a, a nice symbiotic relationship, right? So, so Grammar Tech is good at uncovering these things and, and, and generating data, but you have to manage this data. And that's where the Armor Code solution comes in to get, to get you that overall dashboard as to, hey, what's important? What's not important? What do I need to act now? What do I need to act on later? 
Exactly, exactly. And, uh, you know, this is what ultimately gets us down to the thing that we all want to do, which is, you know, ship secure software and ship it fast, right? Um, because yep. if we if we are slow to respond to a vulnerability, we, you know, the bad guys win. If we're slow to deliver new functionality to market, our competitors win. So, you know, it's all about balancing those things. Both are bad, yes. All right. Great. Well, Mark, thank you very much for your time today. I This was a great chat. And, and I think, you know, we, we need to get together more often. Maybe we can connect together uh, when it's not so snowy and cold outside. Come over and ski. The weather's wonderful. That sounds great. All, All right. right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Mark, for your time. Um, stay, stay tuned for an upcoming episode. Hi everyone, let's talk AppSec Ops is going on the road. We're gonna be live from RSA 2023. So if you can't make it, join us virtually. We'll do an expo tour, we'll do a highlight reel. We're gonna shoot, do some great interviews with folks talking about the software security practices. We're gonna see what's new. If you can come, check it out, track me down. Let's have a quick chat. Would love to get you on camera. Take care, enjoy the next episode.